Welcome to the Web Piano Teacher Podcast. Gather together and relax with us as we perform your favorite songs, discuss what makes them great, and how to make it work on piano. If you'd like to learn, play, and share this song like Sean does using his revolutionary whiteboard technique, visit webpianoteacher.com and try out the free membership level. Please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. We have Hugh Laurie's version of Swanee River. Here we go. Way down upon the Swanee River Far, far away That's where my heart is turning ever That's where the old folks Nice job. <clears throat> wow, I was hanging by the seat of my pants. <laughs> All right. <whole> <laughs> well, welcome to the <clears throat> Web Piano Teacher podcast. podcast. What is this? What are we? we yeah, don't, it's a podcast. We don't even know what we're sure. doing anymore. Yeah, we're filming a podcast. Yeah. So I'm Shauna. I am Sean of WebPianoTeacher.com. I am an online piano teacher, teach uh, piano lessons on my website, and I kind of use a different method. Then most people, I don't use written notes. I use letters and chords. It's it's kind of weird when you first look at it, but a lot of people uh, have used it uh, across the world for almost 20 years now uh, as an alternative to reading music. So that's what I do. What do I do? <laughs> you're my support. I'm the support. You're the, yeah, you're the talent behind, behind it all that nobody sees. I don't sees. think I'm the talent behind <laughs> it all, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, well, we thought we'd uh, get in and do some podcast again. And, you know, if you've kind of been away for a while... Uh, but we thought it'd be cool if we did some podcasts of actual lessons that I teach on the website. And this is an actual uh, lesson series that I did on the website. Uh, Hugh Laurie's version of Swanee River, which many people have done so many different ways. We didn't realize till we started. Well, I mean, I guess it. I just didn't 
I don't think about it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just a song that uh, has been done so many different ways. And this is just one of the ways. It's kind of the New Orleans uh, piano style here uh, to do it. And uh, I kind of limped my way through it, kind of s- sort of sight reading it. And uh, Shauna did a great job singing it. But you ought to look it up on YouTube. Listen to, to Hugh Laurie. He's an actor. And what, what? Yeah, if you don't know who he is, he, he's the guy from House. Uh-uh. Yeah, <laughs> we that's what I remember him from. We yeah. didn't watch it, but uh-huh. it was like all yeah, he over was, TV. Well, uh-huh. It seemed like he was one of the most important doctors, maybe the important one on the show. And uh, uh, I don't want to. I like, can't even talk, talk about, about it. it yeah, we didn't, I've only yeah. saw commercials. But that's what I just see him in a white coat, you know, being a doctor on TV is what I remember. But I had no idea that he played. This is what I loved about it, though. Um, a lot of you know actors will kind of use their fame, you know, from. Uh, being on TV or movies or whatever, and then they want to have a, a music career as well. So they kind of use that, and you know they're they're okay. They're not you know great a lot of times, but and uh, maybe t- a lot of times I think it's frustrating for them uh, that they don't see the same success you know, as they do in their acting. But uh, Hugh is he's a uh, you know a legitimate piano player and singer. I mean he's well number one. I don't think he's really trying uh, to find success yeah. as a musician. I think he can play he's played since he was six years old he plays Uh multiple instruments i didn't know that yeah piano guitar harmonica drums and saxophone oh wow and he sings yeah but i I think he just can make music so he wants to make music yeah you know i don't Uh think he's (laughs) trying to be a musician but as far as i mean he's he's just already he could he could do this you know without the the acting stuff is, is what i mean yeah and um I mean, it's really good. It's really solid. Everything is there. I mean, especially the, it, we can get into the music of this a little you mean bit. Like technique wise? Yeah, technique wise. His left hand's there. His right, he's real solid rhythmically all the way through. Uh, he plays it much better than I just did. <laughs> of course, I, you know, I haven't practiced it much. I kind of, that's my, I've been playing it for about 20 minutes before we try to, to, to run this. <laughs> it's hard because the bass line's a little bit different than the way I play a, you know, a new New Orleans bass line that I always do it. So it's kind of hard. I keep fighting that. My left hand wants to go back to the way I usually do it. Um, but I mean, it's legitimate. It's, it's, it's great. His, his voice is great on it. Um, but the, this one recording, I haven't listened. I think he has an album. Yeah. I think this it's is just one album. of the tracks. Yeah. And it's, it's very good. And I would get it and listen to it, you know, myself, but I'm, I mean, he's great. I've, I've I did miss. So I listened to the recording several times. <clears throat> the, my favorite part of it, is the violin? Oh yeah, that was in there. <laughs> I don't. You probably tuned that out because you were listening yeah. to what the piano did. No, I heard but, it. I heard it. Yeah, because you kept saying, "Well, why don't you sing on this part?" Because it's a long time to not sing. Yeah, but on the recording, I was wanting you to cover up some of my piano. Well, <laughs> he was like, really the the violin had sort of a uh huh vocal part. Yeah. In there. Yeah, the, anyway, uh huh. The way it's kind of makes it sound sad and um. But anyway, getting into the the music of this, you know, we teach this on the site. And, of course, you know, it's not one lesson. I always break them up into, I think it's like five lessons or something like that. And I have my sheet, you know, that I wrote out for this. Members can download on the site. Uh, And this is not a beginner lesson, you know. So someone's just getting into piano. Please don't start with this one. (laughs) Even if you have a lot of musical talent, you got to work your way up. Okay, let me ask a question. So if somebody loves this style of music. Yeah. Do you know of a lesson off? This is like really putting you on the off spot. the top of my head. Yes, that they could play that fits this style. If yeah, I have um, beginner blues lessons on the site. I did them a, a while ago, uh, but I think it's like eighteen or nineteen lessons. They're just blues lessons, mm-hmm. and they're actually in this key. They're in the key of C, oh. and they start you off with bass lines and sh- with the blues scale. In fact, that would be a good. Um, lesson series to go through before one would start this, even if they have the chops to play it. I would say go through that that 18 or I think 18 or 19 lessons on the site, but it's uh, beginner blues lessons, something like that. Um, and it'll uh, get you started on just, you know, blues licks in general and uh, with blues bass lines and, and such and putting your hands together. Um, but uh, that's what I'd start with. I mean, even if you're, you know, a beginner um, or even if you're you're not a beginner, but you need you don't know anything about the blues because mm. it's a different type of playing. It's not you know, yeah. it, you know if you can play pop music and you can play classical music, whatever. It, this is different. This is, um, you know, this will throw you for a loop if you've never played it before and you try to, you know, just start doing it. 
But <clears throat> I love uh, this New Orleans style. It reminds me of Dr. John a lot. He's one of my favorite players. So I, I looked up, I mean, guys, we know Hugh Laurie didn't write this song. It was written <laughs> yeah. in 1851. Yeah. But anyway, so I don't want to keep saying Hugh Laurie's song. It's not uh-huh. his. It's his rendition, yeah. It's his rendition. But he, I guess, was on some radio talk show or some talk show, and uh-huh. he got to say, like, his whatever his most influential albums or artists. Yeah. Dr. John. Dr. John. Oh, I was going to say that because one of my favorite licks in here that he uses. Uh, mm-hmm. That, that, the, the down. That Dr. John used all the time. He just, just constantly. Yeah. One thing I love about blues is you can hear those same licks over and over and over and over again. And you never get tired of them. They're always cool. They're always fun. And blues, it's funny, you know, it's called blues. Like you have the blues, but yeah. it's always uplifting. To me, it's always fun. I know there are sad blues songs. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't but know. But whenever you, you know, you play a New Orleans style thing, it's really cool. It takes a lot of coordination. I think maybe why <laughs> it's fun is because you can't not listen to a song like that and get your like whole body involved. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I'm not like a dancer or like, but you just, there's something uh-huh. you got to get yeah. physically involved in it. And you watch these guys that are playing Dr. John and, and others that are playing, you know, piano on this. Because, they're, they're, I mean, they're doing the bass line. They're doing the licks on the right hand. And they're singing a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. And uh, you watch them a lot of times. When they're playing, you'll see little facial motions or ticks or something because they're, they're getting it all together. But it takes as much coordination as any other type of music, I think, I can think of. And I play, I've played it all. And to play New Orleans blues and have a, a left hand bass going like that, do the licks and sing, that's a talent um, that that is unique that I've never come across in any other genre of music. I wonder if anyone's done a scientific study of like yeah. what's happening in the brain. You know how like they do those like when you drink eat sugar and then mm-hmm. like this part of the brain lights up. Right. If somebody was all connected how many processes the brain is using, like yeah. the right side, the left side, the frontal, you know, to be able to. It's got to use so many. Do the left hand, the yeah. right hand, and sing. Yeah, yeah. Because I know there's, you know, the cerebellum take is like the physical uh, coordination part of the brain, but then you have left and right working together because, you know, one one's creative, the other one's, you know, thinking about what you're doing and your technique and everything. So I'd imagine it would be, Pretty Im- impressive to look up. at that, yeah. Because <laughs> I get really tired after playing a lot of music, and I don't think it's physically. I think it's yeah. it really takes a lot. Can of you imagine adding the singing and the performance aspect? Yeah, right. To it also, and if you've ever wondered, you know, how do they, how are they playing like that and singing? I think it's because they play so much. They've played these licks so many times. They have to become automatic and instinct. You can't sing and play like that if the playing part is not instinct. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. So just play. Which play. we do get that question a lot. Mm-hmm. Like people emailing us wondering, well, the the number one question is, how do I get my right hand and left hand to play together? <laughs> yeah. Right. Which, right. We can talk about that. It's just practice yeah. though, isn't it? I mean. It is. It's just doing it. It's like a baby. <laughs> and you, you see, and I, I've had four kids and I watch them learn to walk. Okay. Try to stand. And what is the first thing they do? They try, they, they find something they can pull up on. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you're watching them. Oh no, they're going to fall back and hit their head. You Until know, the no, fourth. And then kid. the fourth one, you're like, ah, oh, he'll be all right. <laughs> 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 anyway, th- they do, th- you know, that's like the first thing they do. And then they start making their way sideways around yeah. the couch or whatever they're holding on to. And they'll fall down, you know, in the course. Of, but what do they do? They get right back up and they go after it. And then they suddenly they, they start to let go of that thing. And then they try to balance and they look over at you. Look, look what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can just see it. <laughs> and uh, then there's the next step of taking one step falling, you know, and then, but there's, there's a process there and the baby never gives up. They yeah. keep trying until they get it. And for you to say, I can't get my hands to play together. What am I doing? It's like a little baby going, I can't walk. What do I need to do? You know, I know a baby can't do that, but um, you haven't gone through the processes of trial and error to get there, you have to keep trying and not give up to do it. You have to keep, let's say I'm trying to play this lick. Okay. I'm trying to do that. And I say, I can't get my hands to play together. Well, have you played this right hand by itself? And a lot of people say, well, yeah, I can play hands separately. I can't get them together. 
Well, if you can't play them by themselves, forget playing them together. <laughs> yeah. Right? You've got to do that first step of being able to play them by themselves. Second step is to take each, take it really slow. And I'm looking right at this thing and looking at my sheet. Over and over. And then eventually the speed comes after I play it a ton of times. Slow. And then eventually... I'll get it eventually if I do it enough times slow. But you have to let yourself fall down a thousand times before you can finally stand up and do it. That's the idea. Um, so a and lot of time, overcoming the frustration. Yeah, yeah. Because people say, "I want to," you know, "I, I, I just want to." Maybe, maybe you're good at other things. You can catch on quickly to other things. You know, yeah. it ain't going to be that way in music. I don't care who you are. <laughs> You're going to have to go through the same processes that everyone else does to get your hands to play together. You have to play it slow and not give up. Then once you get the feeling of playing your hands together, then the other licks won't take so long to learn. That's the thing people don't understand is, is once you get that, that technique, once you get that skill yeah. of playing your hands together, then it starts to translate into every other piece of music. And you won't have trouble, as much trouble with the next song as you did with this. I think, too, because you were saying, like, you were following along, uh -huh. note by note, matching them up to play. Right. But then at a certain point, I think it's relinquishing looking at it mm -hmm. and just feeling it. Yeah, you get have in, to feel it. That's instead right. of getting into, like, right. note by note by note, then you got to kind of let go and feel the music a little yeah. bit and not worry about it being so precise. Right. And that's what I kind of like about my method that I use. I use letters on a, on a white, and you, you can see this. If you look at my YouTube videos, you can see, you know, what the sheet looks like that I'm, I'm using. But I think this style of playing really lends itself well to my method of teaching more than notes written on a staff, because I really, you know, concentrate on how it feels to play it on on thinking about the chord instead of each individual note and people that tend to use my sheets they tend to memorize really well because that's the way they're thinking they're not yeah. a note machine nothing wrong with being a note machine being able to be a note machine but when it comes to just playing and enjoying it you have to see the sentences in the paragraphs rather than each individual letter yeah you know, which is what what happens when you're a note machine so yeah so i was going to talk a little bit about uh, this, um, you know, we started the inch. We started uh, that beginning. You sang very well, by the way. <laughs> that I liked, um, and um, we had that slow intro, and then we start this. And nothing that Hugh does in this is like unheard of. It's all typical, you know, blues stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, he's just you know, carrying on the tradition, and I love it. So we have this right here. And it, it's a little pattern on a, on a chord. You could take a chord and do that. <clears throat> but, you know, the, it's not just where you just play a chord. You have to take this chord and play a pattern with it. And then you have to be able to do it on another chord, F chord. And a G chord, F, C. And I think it's really important when you start this one or any blues style piece to do the left hand alone so, so, so much so you can't stand it, till you're bored to tears. So your wife is like, oh my <laughs> gosh, please <laughs> right. stop. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be. Been there. <laughs> it's got to become instinct. Um, and until you don't have to think about it, you still need to play that left hand. Then the right hand licks just start happening. But what makes it sound sound so cool is that left hand. It really does. But and it has to have that that foundation. So uh, you know, in learning something like this, that's paramount is playing left hand alone slowly. You know. So, but I love blues. You know, it's just so cool. And you even sang it bluesy. So the the, the, beginning. the next part of the song, when mm -hmm. it kind of switches, okay. is that still blues? Oh, or is um, that kind of more? Oh, good jazz question. This leaning? this part. Yeah, what doesn't sound blues to me? No, it doesn't. That's that's good. Um, it sounds to me like Latin style salsa. Mm. You know, and you have that accent on the end of two, one, two, oh, one, two, and one, two, and 
So you, you have another bass pattern. It's just an A minor chord. The next one's an yeah, E Yeah, the chord. music, it's it's like language. It matters where the accent is. Oh, it certainly does. And that, that's what, <laughs> that, that changes the whole feel. Yeah, that's what will change the style of it. But in fact, I was joking half, partly joking about you playing the bongos. Yeah, I said, <laughs> a little that bit. was a hard no. But this would this would work. <laughs> we have some bongos over here. Anyway. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Now, if I played that like this. Sounds like an Elton John song. Yeah, I can't help it. I immediately just go to Elton John <laughs> style. But I changed the accent in the yeah. way. I, but I played the same notes. The notes were the same. It's just the accents where you put them. And one. So that was... The Salsa. accents yeah. and the spaces. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And then, wait, why don't we do that part again while we're talking about it? You ready? Uh -huh. One, two, ready, go. Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far. the old folks stay yeah and then the transition chord and we're back yeah but um my favorite lick is in there toward the end and when you learn this one um this is what i love about music <clears throat> you know if you read read a book you've, you've read that book and then you go to the next one then you go to the next one. In fact, I've started reading a lot lately. Finally. <laughs> Shauna got me into reading. I, you know, I think you have to practice to get your brain to where you can it's true. do it. Because I, I was trying to read a Tom Clancy book. And, you know, he's he's a great writer. I'm sure he's all, but he's all over the place. You know, that you have this person and this person. And I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> you know, I couldn't just piece it together. And I was like, I can, this is driving me nuts. So I didn't finish it. But then I, I got on to another author and, was reading but made myself finish you know it's like you're except here here's where i'm laughing so i'm like because i'm a big reader you read fast i do read fast but you're actually reading every page yes. okay all right but now <laughs> i'll be like running around the house doing a million things <laughs> and you're sitting in the chair reading a book i'm like <laughs> yeah i mean i'm uh, expanding my horizons okay well <laughs> I have so much I could say about that <laughs> yeah. with one author. But. Where was I going with that? Okay. All right. So, you know, then you have to train your brain to, to be able to do that again. I, th I think, you know, all of the technology in our phones and all that kind of make a short tension yes. span. Because if you think about... It does. I'm uh, teaching my son some Victorian era British uh -huh. literature right now. Uh. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's really not my thing either, but I'm trying to stay positive. But like so many scenes, they finish dinner and they go into the whatever parlor and they're playing piano. They're playing these complicated card games. They're reading books and poetry and they're painting, drawing. Yeah. I mean, these are skills that like every single person had. Yeah. Because there's nothing else to do. I mean, there's nothing else to do. <laughs> but I mean, the mind is a really elastic thing. It is. Yeah. I and think when you're doing those things, you're having to activate your mind. But when you're just, you know, doing this. It's a zone out. Yeah. So I, I really think, you know, I had to retrain my brain to be able to, to concentrate. And now, now it's a lot easier. to. There's another direction I wanted to go in talking about this song, too, that I kind of stumbled upon. Not stumbled upon, but. When I was searching the song to listen to, you okay. know, this morning so I could learn it <laughs> because I didn't get the text that I was hoping to get days ago of what song we were I doing. I like to keep a, you know, spontaneity. <laughs> so <laughs> that's not the type of spontaneity in a marriage the wife wants. <laughs> anyway, hmm. how many versions of this song there were. So I, yeah. of course, went to the original well, on the Wikipedia page, there's like a play, you know, mm -hmm. and it's this lady and I'm listening to her singing and I said, is this even the same song? Yeah. And you said, yeah, there's the melody in there. But so anyway, then looking at 
on iTunes, uh-huh. like the Beach Boys did this, Chuck Berry, Ray Charles, Pete Seeger, the Chipmunks. Wow. You know, like <laughs> Alvin and the Chipmunks. Oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, so that's like a pretty broad range. Of course, there's bluegrass versions, uh-huh. like, you know, just instrumental banjo, guitar. Anyway, but that a single song could be played. When you hear the Chuck Berry version, you're like, that's Chuck Berry. He does yeah. his same opening yeah. guitar lick that he does on every song. <laughs> and then you got a folk, Pete Seeger, just doing the, like, folk mm. sound. And then literally the chipmunks. All right, boys, are you ready? Like, you know, from like. <laughs> right. Anyway, but I thought that was so interesting that a single song Could be in- can be interpreted in so many ways. Yeah. yeah. Which then I went down a huge <clears throat> rabbit hole of like, what was the other, I, something jukebox, something, some group and they do covers and uh-huh. I played, so they did. Soundgarden, Black Hole Sun. Oh, yeah, yeah. But in a, like, that was cool. jazzy. Anyway, I thought, man, if we really were up to a challenge, <laughs> we'd do the thing that, like, Jimmy Fallon does on a yeah. show where he spins a wheel and you get a song, but then you have to sing it in this genre or whatever. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I was like, oh, if we had a wheel, I'd spin it and be <laughs> like, okay, Sean. Yeah. And so why was this song so, and still, so popular? I mean, we think about... You know, a song lasted 20 or 30 years. Oh, that's popular. But this has lasted what, over well over 100 years, right? Yeah, 1851. So who, do we know who wrote it? Yeah, I didn't write that down, though. Okay, all right. But, but a, a, they know, it's not anonymous. Someone knows who wrote yeah. it. Okay, wow. I'm sure at this point it's public domain. Yeah. That's right. why anybody can snatch it up and do yeah. their own version. But it's for it to still be this popular, this, this later, this much later. Wow. Well, I was going with that on, you know, the book thing. <laughs> Um, with with music, it's kind of different because once once you play this, you take everything that you've learned when you play this to the next thing. Mm-hmm. So if you play another song in the key of C with uh, New Orleans blues style, you already know maybe fifty to seventy five percent of what's going to happen in yeah. the song. You really do. You could also write your own song. Yeah, you could, and blues really lends itself to that. It's one of those things that's amazing because you just have a few things in blues that happen over and over again, and mm-hmm. we never get tired of it. It's always fun. It's always fresh. It's always cool. And and it, you make it your own by what are you saying? Yeah. And where are you putting the accents, and where are you putting the spaces? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have a completely original yeah. thing. You know, even within this uh, Hugh Laurie rendition, you have versions. The beginning? Yeah. So we have that, that sing, if you could sing a little bit of the beginning again. Way down upon the Swanee River Far, far away That's where my heart is turning ever That's where the old folks so there's a style right there. I know. I was going to say, I don't recall that from the recording. <laughs> that, I just added a little, what he did, and then you have initial chord, and then, of course, you have this style. And I love how he goes, <laughs> can't do it. You said you were going to do all that. <laughs> I know. I'm just trying it. to play it, you know. <laughs> so we have this. Then the B section. better now <laughs> yeah nervous, you should have heard him 30 minutes ago <laughs> i couldn't get better do it all all right so we have that style and then we have the uh, latin kind of salsa style so we already have See, three that's what i can't even imagine too how it works your brain mm-hmm. to jump from one style to the next style to the next style mm-hmm. Practice. yeah and, uh, you know, music is so connected. I mean, classical music is so connected to rock music. Well, I was so just thinking to back to our, so connected to our Elton John episode yeah. where we went through his whole first album. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially a lot of the songs we yeah. weren't familiar with. Right. Just how it would blow my mind. Like, he's doing one thing and it's so cool. And then he completely 180 into a completely different genre, different feel, yeah. different sound. 
same song, and then he can jump right back in. Yeah. And he did that <clears throat> seamlessly over so many songs, so many albums, his whole career. Right. Yeah, Incredible. guys, check out our other our Elton John podcast if you're interested in Elton John. It's pretty good. All right, we got cut off. <laughs> yeah, our camera cuts off after 30 minutes, so. So I don't yeah. know where we, I'm not really <laughs> sure at what point that message came on, yeah. but. We, we definitely need to want to wrap it up and have an ending <laughs> to the podcast. So um, I would just say if you're really interested in blues and this music and playing piano, if you are a beginner, you need to start with beginner lessons. That is so important. And I have 50 beginner lessons in my Easy Piano Lesson series on the website. I made it specifically for people who don't know anything about music starting from ground zero. Also for people who can play already, maybe you read notes, uh, but you just want a different way to learn or want to learn some of the songs that are on the website. You need to kind of get used to my method, look kind of a crash yeah. course. So it will also help you if you're into that too. And you'll just blow through them. If you can already play a little bit, um, it, it, you'll just blow through them and it'll help you get used to my style of teaching. Yeah. I'd say the first 10 to 15 lessons, Yeah, if you, if you know how to play piano, you just would go yeah. through those. I mean... Because some of the lessons are finding A on the keyboard. Yeah, finding, yeah. You know, so. Right. It just kind of gets you used to the way I do things. But the method is something to learn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it doesn't take that long. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if you're ready for, for playing blues stuff, I would start with the blues lessons I have on the side. Like I said, there's 18 or 19 of them um, that will introduce you to the blues genre. Um, and you can even do them if you're, you know, sort of a beginner. You can even do some of the, the basic ones at the beginning to get you into blues. Um, what's great about it, it's in the same key that this song is in. So, you know, the key of C, you'd be able to, to jump in. Um, <clears throat> so there we go. There we go. Right. And I do want to say, so we will hopefully be doing these uh, more often. Yeah. Back yeah. from a little hiatus. Um, but we'll be going through any of the songs we're going to be putting up on the website. We right. will be kind of discussing the song and the uniqueness of the song and the artist. And, and I'll be playing it for you. All, of you, you, all these years you guys wanted true. me to play the song for you. So here we go. I'm trying to play the song. And maybe <laughs> one day we'll get back to our original vision for the podcast yeah. of an artist and writing a song because that was mm -hmm. super fun. Yeah. Um, but you can check out our first three episodes of the podcast, Elton John, Willie Nelson, and Carol King. Right. And we... Kind of we wrote, wrote songs, yeah, yeah, in in their style, uh, completely original songs, and performed them on the podcast. So. We did. All right, so thanks yeah. everyone out there for listening, and check out webpianoteacher.com, and we'll see you next time. See you next time.